Hello, welcome to Critical Recap. I'm Danny Carr and I'm here to catch you up on the latest episode of Critical Role. Make sure to check out critroll.com for cool merch and information on events like Emerald City Comic Con and more. Now, here's what happened on episode 52, Feral Business. The Mighty Nine wake up outside of Asarius, the city of beasts. Gluzo gives them a couple tips and Jester asks about his faith. He tells her of the Luxon, said to be the original god of Exandria. Believing in him promises a chance at being reborn. They discuss what to do about their appearances, so Ford makes himself more buff, Jester makes herself goth, Caleb changes into a male twin of Jester, and he also changes Bo into a male red tiefling. You're, you're, you're a dude tiefling. Um, since Caleb's really only seen one dude's tiefling uh, before. <laughs> Long may he reign, indeed. Holy shit. I've only seen one dude, Steve Ling. Oh, yeah. Why is just my dick purple? <laughs> Gluzo guides them to the city, leaving them the moment they enter. They see soldiers, including an enormous war tortoise and other monstrous creatures. In the city itself, they see a minotaur adorned in plate armor and a cape, and the citizens treat him reverently. Not immediately gets a huge crush on him. As they wander the city, they catch the eye of this minotaur, who makes his way to the party. He does not recognize them as citizens and demands to know their business. Clay says they are looking for transport and that they are contractors from all over, which the minotaur buys. He is Sunbreaker Ulaman, and he suggests that they see Lady Zethris Olios if they are looking for contract work. Are you flirting with the fucking minotaur? He is fucking hot. <laughs> 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 and, you know, 50-50, my husband's dead, so. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> wow. Oh, We've been sending him messages every night. They find a shop that sells beasts and meet an eccentric armless goblin named Zolf. He has several panther-like creatures named Moorbounders for sale at 500 gold apiece. Zolf offers to lower the price if the party takes a look at the spot where he breeds the Moorbounders underneath the building. Something has been attacking his creatures, and he wants them to kill it. The Nine agree with a steeper discount, and Zolf leads them to the basement. They approach the door, sending Frumpkin inside to look first. There are several swarms of rats, and Frumpkin sees a large, feline-looking creature with four arms on the ceiling. Bo mentions that she wanted a pet rat growing up, but her mother refused to let her have one. Knot pours oil all over the rats in the room, and the party enters combat. The cat dog fiend monster has a nasty bite and a barbed tail that causes poisoning and paralysis. A firebolt from Caleb lights the oil on fire, which helps with stemming the swarm of rats. As Bo knocks out the creature, Knot is attacked by two more of them in the corner, which successfully paralyze her. Ford manages to rescue her with a misty step. Yeah, I'm gonna use my bonus action with the Summer's Dance Falchion to misty step to Knot. All right. You then something poof, appear partway across the chamber right next to Knot. I'm gonna reach out and grab her and go bad doggy, and I'm gonna cast Thunderstep. Ooh! And I'm gonna bring Knot with me. Yasha is paralyzed by one of the creatures as well, but Caleb manages to permanently banish one back to its dimension, and Jester kills the last one. They finish off the rats, and Jester considers having Nugget finish off the first creature, but decides against it. Nugget! Bite him! Don't bite him, you're too sweet. Don't bite anything. Here, <laughs> have some candy. The party notices a red crack just in front of one of the stones in the wall, hovering in the air. Jester casts a spell magic just as another creature attempts to leap out from it. She successfully seals it closed and the party returns to Zolf. They tell him about the rift and he asks them to mention it to Lady Olios. Jester and Nott are chosen to speak to Lady Olios as they are not bound by a disguise. They enter a spire in the middle of town and are led down a chamber past many doors until they are brought to Lady Zethris Olios. She is a beautiful dark elf with silver hair and amethyst eyes. Jester and Nott try her patience as they attempt to explain what they saw, but manage to persuade her to their side. That, that impatience and hardness that has been growing subsides. Her, you can see her, she began to lean forward in kind of a, I'm going to de deconstruct these people type of energy, something that you've encountered before. And then just a few things you said and a few th the way that you explained it away, she felt a little more comfortable and goes, well, we can use all the help we can get. Lady Olios states that she is in need of more allies and wonders if they would be willing to take on two tasks for her. The first is to track down a spy for the Empire, and the second is to investigate some strange murders in town that have a demonic bent to them. There is monetary compensation, but she is also willing to trade a favor as well. She asks if they are consecuted, but neither knows what that means. 
Jester and Knott return to the Nine, discussing these options. They are intrigued by the favor, as it could be useful in finding and freeing Yeza. They confirm with Zolt that they can pick up their Moorbounders whenever they are ready, and retire to the outside of town to rest. That is it for episode 52 of Critical Role. Catch episode 53 on Thursday, February 28th at 7pm Pacific on twitch.tv slash criticalrole, and stay tuned to critrole.com for all the latest updates.